So who basically is the youngest pope of all time? Pope Benedict IX, the youngest pope who ever served, was an Italian nobleman named Alberic III. Some sources believe that Benedict IX was about 20 when he took the position. Other sources state he was 11 or 12, based upon the unsubstantiated testimony of Rupert Gleiber, a monk of San Germanus at Uxere. He must have been well loved, as he was named Pope three separate times between the years 1032 and 1048. He came from a family of popes, being the nephew of Benedict VIII and John XXIX, and a grandnephew of John XII. His father obtained the papal chair for him by bribing the Romans. Yeah, it's all about the money, right? According to the ecclesiastical historian Eamon Duffy, Benedict IX obtained his position through bribery and force, polluted the office, together with his scandalous behaviour, and eventually sold his position to the highest bidder when he decided to abdicate and marry his cousin. This was a remarkable act, as it makes him the only pope who sold his papacy. As I said, it's always about the money. The late 10th and early 11th centuries encompass a number of the darkest years within the history of the medieval papacy, during which a series of immoral and dissolute popes almost brought the institution to ruin. In 1037, he went north to satisfy the Emperor Comrade and excommunicated Heribert, Archbishop of Milan, who was at enmity with him. Benedict IX took the papacy back from the newly elected Sylvester III the old-fashioned way, by force. I wonder if money got in the way this time. Times were tough during these years, and Benedict IX's second term ended when he abdicated of his own volition and sold the papacy to his godfather, Gregory VI, because you're not supposed to be ready to buy that honour. Taking advantage of the dissolute life he was leading, one among the factions within the city drove him from it in 1044 amid the best disorder and elected an anti-pope, Sylvester III, within the person of John, Bishop of Sabina. But Benedict IX decided to come back stronger. He regretted his resignation and returned to Rome to become Pope a third time after Gregory VI's successor, Clement II, died, and he took it by force, and maybe with some money again, in 1047. Times were confusing, and three people declared themselves Pope at the same time. These were Gregory VI, Sylvester III, and our favourite character, Benedict IX, who also reasserted his claim. A variety of influential clergy and laity implored the Emperor, Henry III, to cross the Alps and restore order to this chaos. Henry intervened, and at the Council of Sutri in December 1046, Benedict IX and Sylvester III were dismissed, while Gregory VI was encouraged to resign because the arrangement he made was considered a bribe. A German, Clement II was chosen to succeed Gregory VI, but Benedict IX never gave up and didn't accept his dismissal. When Clement II died in October 1047, Benedict seized the Lateran Palace in November again becoming Pope, but was driven away by German troops in July 1048. To fill the vacuum, the German-born Demasus II was elected Pope and universally recognised as such. Benedict IX refused to appear on charges of simony in 1049 and was excommunicated. Benedict IX's eventual fate is obscure, but he seems to have given up his claims to the papal throne. Benedict IX was buried in the Abbey of Grotta Ferrata, circa 1056. Consistent with the abbot, he was penitent and turned away from his sins as pontiff. After this fascinating tale, you may wonder how did such a nasty pope get elected in the first place? Well, the answer may be due to a nepotistic appointment in order that his father, Alberic III, could maintain control over Rome. Something you've got to know about the pope at this point was that he was both the spiritual ruler of Christendom and also the temporal one of Rome. His father was the lord of the town, and he basically bribed the Romans to elect his son. If you vote for him, I'll pay you. If you don't, I'll kill you. Your choice. Which might you prefer? Said Colombe. You maintain control over Rome by maintaining control over the Pope. He continues by saying that he was a rapist. He was a murderer. 
even after the pornocracy, he really set the bar for his replacement low. He also neglected his religious duties. But when you're busy raping and murdering, you don't often have time for everything. By now, you may be wishing for a dark end to this story, but apparently evil men can have fairly peaceful ends. He died very peacefully, and you would possibly say penitently, within the abbey in Grotta Ferrata, said Columbe. When he died, the people that knew him were quite pleased with him, including the abbot of the place. Little is known about the last days of Benedict IX. Consistent with Logan, he possibly finished his days as a penitent at the monastery of Grotta Ferrata in his ancestral Alban Hills, perhaps ill-served by the reformers who wrote his story. He died in 1056, in his mid-twenties, having led a life that changed the Catholic Church forever.